Welcome back. Um, so now we're going to move on to the last topic in our exponential smoothing procedures, which is the Holt Winters exponential smoothing method. Um, so this is now a method that can handle both trend and seasonality. So if you remember from previous lectures, um, seasonality can sometimes be additive or multiplicative. So multiplicative seasonality is when um, the variance within your data um, is increasing with the level of the data, so or increasing over time. Uh, and additive seasonality is where the fluctuations within your data are roughly constant throughout time. So we'll look at both of those methods. Um, so in both cases, uh, Holtz-Winters introduces a smoothing constant gamma for the seasonal component. So uh, what, what, what they're essentially doing is seasonally adjusting the level of the data. Um, so in the additive model, um, we're dealing with absolute values. And what we're doing is we're subtracting a seasonal component from the current level. So the current seasonal um, calculation from the current level calculation to remove that seasonal value. In the multiplicative model, um, the seasonal component is not an absolute value, it's a percentage, it's a relative value. So we're dividing through by that to seasonally adjust your, your observed value. So here's the additive method. Um, so we can see that in the four, I won't go into this in too much detail, but we can see in the forecast function, we've now got a third linear term, which is our current seasonal um, component that we're going to add to the data. Um, we've got our, level, our modification to our level component where we're subtracting um, the seasonal component. And then we've got a new um, equation, equation 3.4, which is um, smoothing our estimate of the seasonal component. So we're going to work with um, the Australian beer data set um, and that looks like this. So we can see there's some seasonality within it. Um, this data set is held within um, pmdarema.datasets. So if you just import load osbeer from, from pmd.datasets, you, uh, you can very quickly get that data set. I've added a, um, a date range to it as an index so that we can use it with exponential smoothing and it's quarterly data. So it looks like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to predict the next 10 years worth of data. Um, so we're going to pass in um, the exponential smoothing data and we're going to pass in um, a seasonal parameter which equals 4. Now we're not going to include a trend component at this point um, and we're going to uh, see what that looks like. Okay, so we're going to run, fit that, get the forecast and look at the summary frame as just as we did with the previous methods. And here we can see the mean value and we can see uh, the, the prediction intervals that go around that point forecast, just as before. So let's plot that. So we can see in red our forecast and we can see our uncertainty limits our prediction intervals around that in the shaded region and it looks a reasonably good fit and the forecast looks sensible so if we have a look underneath that we can see the ETS model is additive errors no trend and additive seasonality fitted um, we've got our smoothing level there um, for for the level and we've got our smoothing for the seasonal component there as well uh, so the multiplicative method as i said the seasonal adjustment here is by dividing through by your seasonal um, level i won't go into the equations here but it basically works in a very similar way as we've seen before we're going to work with the alcohol sales data here um, because that's got a clear multiplicative seasonality within it and trend. 
Um, so let's read that data in and plot it. So we're very familiar with this now. So over time, as the level increases, the fluctuations within that sales data also increases. So uh, for this, we're going to use um, statsmodels.tsa.holtzwinters import exponential smoothing. And that's because Python currently doesn't have a state space equivalent to the multiplicative model. So we're just going to produce point forecasts at the moment. So let's read that in. So this works um, in a similar way. Um, so we're going to create, a, so again, it's called exponential smoothing. So we're going to create an instance of this exponential smoothing class. We're going to pass in our training data. We're going to say it's got a multiplicative trend, which is because there's a slight curvature to it. And we're going to say there's multiplicative seasonality as well. Um, it's monthly data, so our seasonal periods is 12. And then when we fit that model, um, we get a results object back, and then we can call a forecast method off that object and specify the horizon that we would like to forecast. Let's run that and then plot it. So here is our multiplicative forecast. So we can see um, that there's a slight kink in the trend and also um, it's getting the fluctuations are getting bigger as we go into the future, which based on our historical observations is what we've seen. So as the levels increase, so is the fluctuations. And we are expecting that to hold as we go further into the into the future. So we've got a question here. What happens if we assume additive seasonality or multiplicative trend? Um, so we've already got multiplicative trend. So let's have a look at additive seasonality. Um, and you see the, t the difference between the methods here now. So we've got much more um, of a, a constant fluctuation. And, and that doesn't really hold true with what we've seen historically. So it would be a mistake to, to use that forecast. So let's change that back to multiplicative and change trend to additive. So not much of a difference here, um, apart from it's much more of a straight line forecast than, than with multiplicative seasonality. Let's have a look at the final, let's have a look at the fitted model. So slightly different here, so it's not a statistical model in this case, it's not a state space model. Um, but it does tell us that we've optimized our smoothing parameters. We've got additive um, trend, multiplicative seasonality, and that we have seasonal periods was 12. Uh, box cox, for example, with some of these extra parameters, is um, a type of transformation so that, that incorporates both the log transforms that we saw and also the power transformations. But we've, we've not done any transformations of the data here. In practice, we might do that. Um, and we can see here some of the parameters. So we can see, for example, that um, there's been no uh, smoothing of gamma. Um, the slope has been smoothed only um, only slightly, 0 0.03, and the smoothing of the level is slightly higher than that, 0 0.12. And then this, these are our multiplicative seasonality. So we've got 11, uh, 12 variables here, um, and those are our seasonal indices. So that's it. That's Holtz Winters exponential smoothing. It's the most powerful method within the exponential smoothing family. You can pick and choose which components you include in it. Um, at the moment, Python doesn't implement um, the state space version of um, Holtz Winters, so you can't get prediction intervals out of it easily. Um, but it will it will enable you to um, create a point forecast for your for your data.